Hey there, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the Torgo Entertainment YouTube channel. Torgo here. Welcome back to another gig vlog and welcome back to another wedding. November has reared its head. It's probably my favorite month out of the year. It starts to cool down a little bit. Weddings start to wind down a little bit. Well, usually not so much this year. I have three November weddings and then that one in December, but that's, you know, farther down the line. So today we keep everything going. And today, well, actually tomorrow, I'm filming this a day in advance. We celebrate the wedding of JP and Brianna. This is the point in the video where I mention how I got this wedding and it's kind of unfortunate how I got this one. I'm not regretting it at all, but what happened is, and people are gonna not like this, but I don't really care. So this is my first wedding where at least one of the participants is transgender. And they called me because they live in Connecticut and they could not find a DJ available who would do the wedding, which is very sad. I have no such qualms. I like everybody, so I decided to take it on. We had some serious discussions about whether it was going to be worth it because it is so far away. The venue in this case is Bill Miller's Castle in Brantford, Connecticut. Let's go to the map and show you exactly where that is. Five hour drive. I'm used to it, having gone to school in Connecticut, but still it is quite a haul. This is the farthest I have to travel for any wedding this year. At least any single wedding this year. And it's on a Sunday, so you know, that complication applies as well, but I decided, you know what? I'm gonna stick to my guns, and we're going to DJ this wedding, and it's going to be a good time for everybody involved. Suck it, haters! This is another venue where I could not spec out the place ahead of time because I'm not driving that kind of a distance just to get footage for a YouTube video that maybe 200 people will watch. But what makes me nervous about this wedding in particular is that the venue wants me to tap into their house system directly. So I get to bring all my stuff except for the speakers. I'm gonna take my XLR cables directly from my Roland 808 board and pot directly into their system and I don't like that. I've never had to do that really for a wedding. Back at a venue I used to play Logan Ridge, I would do that for cocktail hour, you know, tap into their house system with like a flash drive and just play music that way. That's fine, but the entire night for five hours I don't know how I feel about that because I have no idea what their sound system sounds like. So if it's garbage, people are gonna think I'm garbage. I would hope it's decent. Bill Miller's Castle I know is a very popular wedding venue from people that I know in Connecticut. But that uncertainty is just something that doesn't sit well with me. I am still bringing some speakers with me. I brought the RCF 708As in the car just in case something should happen. You have to be prepared for pretty much any kind of situation like that. And I didn't bring the QSCs with me because it's a smaller group. We're talking under 100 people. Having something as loud as the QSCs, I don't think is going to be very necessary. This is a four to nine wedding and assisting me today is my friend Eric. I went to college with Eric. He has never been on this channel before. He's never done a wedding with me. And I think this might be his first appearance on social media of any kind because he, along with a couple of my other friends from college, have managed to spend their entire lives avoiding all social media, YouTube, Facebook, MySpace when that was a thing, all of it, never bothered with it. And I wish I could say the same about myself, but unfortunately, these things happen when you own a business. If I didn't have, you know, this going on, I'd be off it entirely. But I'm filming this day in advance because I'm actually heading down to the New York City area tonight, Saturday, because I'm in the process of rebuilding my entire DJ setup for next year, just to make things a little easier for setup and tear down times, hopefully make things a little smaller, a little lighter. That way I can have people assist me and not still have me do all the heavy lifting out of sheer necessity, if that makes sense. And who doesn't want to get in and out of places quicker? I've had too many late nights where I've had to take an hour, hour 15 to strike everything down and then drive a long distance. So I'm trying to save as much time as I can. So there are a lot of shops that I like in New York City and Long Island in particular. A lot of my family's from Long Island. So that way I can check those out today and then I just drive two more hours to get to the wedding tomorrow. One o'clock arrival time and the wedding is four to nine. Stay over again in Connecticut Sunday nights and then drive home Monday and do a trivia night right here in Corning. It's another busy weekend, not quite as bad as the triple though. But I hope you're ready for this one. It's a lot of driving, 
Maybe I'll show some footage of some stuff depending on if I get anything, we'll find out. But I hope you're ready for this one. And if I see any comments about this couple down there, you're banned from the channel. Let's be real here. Cool? All right. Let's go! Sunday morning. I am currently in Westbury, New York in the hotel. It's about 8.30. I'm going to be leaving very soon because I made a bit of a mistake, or at least a miscalculation. <laughs> um, Google Maps has the drive to the wedding venue in an hour and a half, but I suspect that's going to take significantly longer because I failed to realize that today is the day of the New York City Marathon. So there's going to be a lot of street closures and they're going to be peppered throughout my travels, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to get to the venue but I'm going to leave ridiculously early to try and get that done. These things happen. Always make sure that if you're going to stop somewhere, what events are going on throughout town. I should be okay. I don't know how much is going to be closed. The weather is not looking the best, but I'm inside all day, so that shouldn't matter too much. So let's head back on the road. This is right off US Route 1. Nice place, very popular wedding venue in Brantford, Connecticut. Using this right here, we have the reception location where this purple star takes place. And what's nice is the entrance for loading is right here. Perfectly simple. The only thing that stinks is that there's stairs right there, so anything on wheels needs to go in this way, such as my moving heads. So now let's transition over and show you yeah, see, the car is right there. You can't ask for much better load in, especially when the parking lot was relatively empty. Here we have the setup for today. Here's the RGBU code for the shade of purple that I used. And here we have the ADJ Element Hex at the base of my pre-wired totems. The 5PX Hex is inside at the top, and the Focus Spot 3Z is doing their thing on top. Here we have the Dragon Front Boards facade in the Ritmo pattern. And here we have my Panasonic 4K camcorder. This was a little bit of a struggle trying to find some ways to put it. The ceremony takes place right there. And as you, you can see, I'm on stage. We have the Allendale Defender right there for chords. I don't like being on stage. Again, there's a bit of a disconnect there, but you know, it is what it is. There's my anti-fatigue mat. The table was provided. Here we have my microphone rack with the Shure ULXDs in there ready to go. My iPad running the Airstream DMX app. The radio two to one mixer to condense those two microphone channels into one because unfortunately, the board that I use only has one mic input. The Logitech trackball mouse, the power bar 65. And here is that board, the Roland DJ808. I love it, but that's the only real downside I have with it. And here we have my Samsung Odyssey Z laptop running virtual DJ2020 with the two terabyte SanDisk hard drive, the Airstream DMX bridge router, the ATH M50X headphones, uh, there's another defender and here's all the cords. That's not me. That is the venue They're the ones with all the cords running everywhere and you can see yeah, that's all their stuff I'm potted into that so I didn't mess with that at all. I'm not about to mess with other people's sound So yeah, we have this RG not RG RCA connection and that is what taps into their system This is ceremony and it's gonna be stricken down and eventually turn into reception. There's Eric. Hi Eric You're on social media now here we have the speakers that I ended up using from the venue. They're QSC. I don't know the models, unfortunately. If you know what the models these are, leave a comment in the comments below. But we only have time for one more thing. It's time to level up. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 
by the Universal Life Church, the God and the Goddess, and all of those who believe in true love and happiness, I now pronounce you married.
Did you have the initiative though? Like, did you have good stats, set through your hands and everything? Here's a song I didn't think anybody would request. <laughs> And I'm back the morning after. I'm coming to you from Wall Kill, New York, which doesn't sound that exciting. It's just a rest stop. See, rest area, nothing too crazy. But yeah, that wedding went really, really well. The only downside was it just wasn't long enough. The venue wanted everything to be completely done at nine and they did a send off without any music. So I had to wrap everything up at around 8.45. So that only gave me about an hour and a half for dance floor time. Now that's enough, but it's definitely shorter than I've been having this year. And I tried to get as many of the must play songs from the couple in as I could. I could physically not get all of them in, just wasn't enough time. Got a couple of requests in. Interesting requests. I had Pantera at a wedding for the second time ever. Back in 2013, I did my friend Drew's wedding right on the New York, New Jersey border and he's a metalhead, so I had to play some Pantera for that one, so this is the second time that happened. And JP and Brianna also did something a couple of couples have wanted to do, but never actually committed to, but they did, and that is the game where they try to go throughout the duration of one song and take a picture with the photographer at every one of the tables. I didn't know that that was gonna happen going in, but of course, I knew that the Legends of the Hidden Temple Temple Run music would have been great for that, so I queued that up and they actually got it done within the three minutes. So that was really nice to see how that actually transpired. The crowd was super cool, about 80 people, but everybody was there to have a good time. Not the largest dancing crowd, but we definitely had a couple moments, especially during the ska set and the punk set where people were really going at it. But again, when you have a Sunday wedding, maybe that's why they wanted to end early. Playlist will be at the end as always. Get ready for a lot of video game music, especially during cocktail and dinner. And I'm Torgo with Torgo Entertainment, heading home next Saturday. We have another wedding, three more for the calendar year. We're winding down. We still have a lot of work to do. I'll see you then. Take care.